Hello again everybody, this is Mel and this is How We Homeschool and I just wanted to take some time now that we've gotten through the bulk of how to get started with homeschooling your littles or at least keeping them busy, how we break things down a little bit for our older kids. And one of the things that comes up fairly frequently is um, how do you homeschool with those subjects that don't just come easily or naturally to you. and. Um, I think this is a common concern for parents. Most parents, when they start to consider homeschooling, aren't really doubting their ability to, you know, teach their kids reading or basic math or writing skills, you know, those kinds of things, because we all do them so frequently. But, um, you know, occasionally we'll get parents that are worried about, like, I don't know how I can teach my kids uh, science or I'm not familiar enough with computers or coding or anything. Like, I know my kids are interested in that stuff and I would hate for them to be missing out, which is a fair concern, right? Like, you don't want your child to be missing out on any, like, real opportunities, especially if it's something that they're really interested in and dedicated to. So. We're probably going to be devoting at least a few videos to this as we go along, um, just the various subjects and how do we supplement our usual core homeschooling subjects with the other stuff that they're interested in. How do we do science? How do we do math? How do we do uh, physical education? How do we make sure that our kids have that full, well-rounded educational experience where we're supplementing with things that they really are interested in and they don't necessarily come easily or naturally to you. Now, I want to encourage you not to believe the lie that you must be an expert in everything that you teach your kids. It's not true. So you as the homeschooling parent have actually a really excellent opportunity to learn alongside your kids. And there are several studies that are dedicated to this, but the defining feature of whether or not a child succeeds academically tends not to be whether your parents are incredibly smart or your parents are experts in every field that they want to teach you. It really has more to do with whether your parents are invested in your education, like mentally, emotionally invested in how you are doing as a person, as a student. So I want to encourage you, like, don't let your fear of like failing at teaching your kids in a given subject keep you from homeschooling because there are definitely ways to do it. So that being said, um, one of the areas that a lot of parents have concerns are in computer sciences and coding. So how do you teach those things, especially when you as the parent might not necessarily know how to code? This can happen even with parents that are fairly familiar with computer sciences. Um, where you just like you know the subject that you want to teach but you don't necessarily know how to pass it on to a young child or you don't necessarily have the time to devote to it that you would like to because you just get busy doing other things so one of the things that we've learned to do is just supplement um i don't feel like i need to make coding a full-time course for every single one of my kids. There are probably three or four major resources that I would really encourage people to use and check out. Um, the first one being KhanAcademy.org. Khan Academy is a free resource. It's all free. It was begun by Sal Khan and he has arranged a website where they do actually a lot of comprehensive subjects that are available for kids from, you know, preschool on up through like college level and you can sign up for an account yourself as a parent and then you can sign up your own children so that you can track their progress you can even set yourself up as their teacher which allows you to track their progress in different ways um, and you can set up assignments that way and stuff like that but one of the things that they do have available is coding um, they have several different courses that you can start your kids on, like JavaScripting, for example. And my older kids have taken to adding that on as a supplemental class um, on top of like their math and science and other things. There's even, once your child is old enough, a forum where they can share their projects with other students. They can collaborate with other students. Children can see the code there on the screen right next to the game that they're playing so that they can see the lines of code and understand like 
how it all fits together, which I think is pretty phenomenal. So it's, it's very collaborative, but it can start out at a very, very simple level where you're literally just learning how to place shapes on a page. Another one that we will occasionally use is Scratch. And Scratch is another website that's been used just to teach basic coding skills to children. Um, and they learn to fit lines of code together, essentially like pieces of a puzzle, which uh, I think is pretty brilliant for young minds to be able to like put these things together even before they're really capable of typing out long lines of code for themselves, which I find really helpful. Um, the one downside about Scratch is probably that it's like a little bit too fun. So I tend to have to like pull my kids away from it and say, hey, I see that you're doing Scratch, but have you actually finished your regular schoolwork? No? Okay, maybe we can get back to that. Another resource that I would really encourage you to check out is your local library. So for us, we have, um, and I realize that this can vary from location to location, but for our local library, we have um, several resources that are available. And our local hands-on museum does these too occasionally where they have um, essentially Zoom meetings that are geared towards children. And a lot of them are STEM related, like science and technology related. Um, they'll do various experiments or do little um, demonstrations or even teach you about coding or computer science, that kind of thing. So I would definitely encourage you to figure that out. But one other thing that we discovered is that our local library has STEM kits available for you to take home. And they're just little self-contained experiential kits. And last week we borrowed a Makey Makey kit. And Makey Makey, for those of you who don't know, is a company that puts together different sets essentially to allow kids to learn the basics of electronics and coding and how, how to put together circuitry and stuff like that. So it's very much like STEAM oriented and they are available for sale on their website, but we actually have them, a couple of them available through our library. So we can borrow them for like a week at a time at our library. And we borrowed this one um, that's meant to demonstrate various aspects of circuitry and how to program uh, controls and that kind of thing. Borrowed it from the library and we found that it was helpful to put together, like an, have an adult, so my husband in this case, put together a demonstration of a couple of things that you could do with the Makey Makey kit, just with the kit itself and our laptop. And we happened to use fruit actually to complete our circuit. And we just demonstrated a little bit about what they could do. And then once they saw, once our kids saw what they were capable of with this kit, they all wanted to immediately just dive in. And it was actually totally chaotic at first. So with this kit, we practiced making circuits, grounding circuits, how to complete a circuit, what different materials could be used to conduct the electricity. It works with a strawberry! Amazing! But they all really, really enjoyed it and they understood by the end of the lesson, they really understood the basics of circuitry and how that works. Um, and then my older children got to jump in and have their own turn. And the Makey Makey set that we borrowed actually can be used in conjunction with Scratch, which I mentioned before. So by the end of the day, my son, who is 11 years old, was able to essentially code his own game and build his own controller using the Makey Makey set and some tin foil. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a box, a cardboard box. I would encourage you, even if you don't have a really high budget, there are any number of things that you can do when you're teaching your kids computer sciences or coding, as long as you have basically a computer and some kind of internet access. Even if you don't have a personal computer, most libraries, if they are open to the public at this point in time, are able to let you in for at least small periods of time to use their computers, to use their internet access. So even if you don't have it at home, you can actually give your kids these experiences. So my bottom line is essentially don't allow your fear that they might not get enough STEAM education to keep you from homeschooling your kids if that's what's holding you back.
All right. So anyway, this is Mel again, and this is how we homeschool. Bye-bye.